Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to the FF Class MacBook Part 3. So as usual, if you haven't seen Part 1 or 2 yet, I'm going to leave an annotation up top and the link in the description down below. But this is the final part of this little series. We've gone through all of the parts, we've successfully, <laughs> in, in, the case of the, in the case of the trackpad anyway, um, installed all the components and now it's time to put this laptop through its paces, see what it's truly capable of. We're going to test the CPU, the GPU, the SSD, the lot here. Um, but before I sort of jump into the synthetic benchmarks, I just want to sort of uh, go over roughly how this laptop has treated me um, over the last couple of weeks. So the laptop that preceded this one was the late 2010 13 inch MacBook Air. And performance wise, they are extremely similarly matched on paper. The MacBook Air has a 2.13 GHz Core 2 Duo, this is a 2 GHz Core 2 Duo. They both have 4 gigs of RAM, this is DDR2, the MacBook Air is DDR3. They both have a uh, quarter terabyte um, SSD. This has the 9400M graphics, the MacBook Air has the 3 320M graphics, um, a little bit quicker again. So yeah, you can sort of see they're extremely similarly spec machines. Um, and yeah, day to day performance. It was then nigh on identical. You don't notice that little drop in in clock speed in the, in the CPU. Um, four gigs of RAM is four gigs of RAM. At the end of the day, the whole DDR2 versus DDR3 thing. You don't notice that honestly in, in day to day performance. And the 9400M, like the 320M, just zips through OS 10 without an issue. Uh, animations are, are nice and smooth, paired with four gigs of RAM. And all in all, performance wise, I haven't noticed any difference whatsoever. Performance wasn't the issue though. The thing I was concerned about was the weight difference. I carried that MacBook Air around 7-8 hours a day sometimes and you forget it's there, honestly. It is so unbelievably light and it's even more so in the 11 inch model. Um, it is incredibly hard to then go back to a traditional 1 inch thick um, 5 pound laptop. And for the first couple of days, my shoulders did hurt and I didn't like it very much and I, I came close at one point to saying, ah, oh, screw it, I'm going to have to get myself another MacBook Air. But after a couple of days, you begin to realise it doesn't actually matter that much. It's not like I'm carrying around a massive 17-inch MacBook Pro. It's not a massively heavy laptop by any means whatsoever. The advantage of, of it being a little bit a little bit more bulky is I get an optical drive. That's that's something that I don't even have in my in my main desktop anymore. So um, this if I ever need to burn a, a disc for anybody, I use the MacBook. Um, in terms of ports you've got Ethernet, you've got audio in and out, you've got Firewire 400, you just get a lot more connectivity. But um yeah of what I thought was going to be a big drawback and what I thought was going to be really difficult to overcome, the weight coming from a MacBook Air it wasn't a massive issue. So then let's get down to business. The first thing we're going to test here is Geekbench. Um, this is Geekbench 3, um, just sort of gives you, it's, it's become the standard now. Um, it's 32 bit of course, I'm not going to buy it, but uh, yeah, we'll just run that. Um, it'll take a few minutes to uh, complete and I'll get back to you when it's finished. I'd just like to point out as this test is finishing now that this thing is completely silent. It's running, it's doing this seriously intense stuff and the fans I think are just, just sort of starting to ramp up now. It is unbelievable. That is one massive advantage that I forgot to mention a minute ago um, over the MacBook is having that extra extra thickness allows for more efficient cooling and this thing I, I haven't seen haven't seen the CPU go above 75 degrees um, the MacBook here I'd sometimes hit 90 and I wouldn't I would avoid doing anything massively intensive on it to avoid overheating it so there we go you can see the score there um, single core score 1126 multi-core uh, 2045 that's very 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 similar to what my MacBook Air got um, just about 100 points down on single core and then the same uh, for multi-core um, and surprisingly that's only about 300 points down on what my old Mac Pro got uh, single core wise so yeah so here's Cinebench, um, I'm not going to run the CPU test because you just basically saw that with uh, Geekbench. 
Um, I'm just going to run the OpenGL test to see how that little 9400M graphics performed. Apple marketed the crap out of it when it came out um, originally with the aluminium MacBooks in 2008. And they're, they're, they're impressive little chip uh, chips. So, yeah, I'm going to leave this running because it's quite a cool little animation to watch. And, um, yeah, I'll start talking when we get a score. So there we go, all done, and look at that, that is cute. 4.70 FPS. Um, well, you, you can't really expect much more, to be honest. Um, what's this here? That's a core, that's in, Intel HD Graphics 4000 for comparison there. So this got 4.7 HD Graphics 4000, which was around in about 2012, I believe. Shipping on the 2012 MacBook Airs and stuff. Um, it's not bad, I mean, this this is a consumer grade laptop that was released in 2009 so before we do test the graphics a little bit further with a bit of gaming um, we're gonna test the SSD see how that thing performs on the on that 3 gigabit per second SATA 2 bus so if you just change the test to 1 gig and here we go MacBook Air uh, for comparison again write speeds are around 150 reads are about 200 so you can see there write speeds here are about 200, reads anywhere from 250 to 300, so it pretty much maxes out that SATA 2 bus. It's an insanely quick SSD this thing, and um, it's just a shame this thing doesn't have SATA 3 because it would just be unbelievably blazingly fast. Um, yeah, we're going to do one more test to uh, just test the SSD. If we go into our applications here, it's the classic open all applications open. So there we go. That's, it's so impressive when you see an SSD just that that much work is just it blows my mind every single time. So there we go on my watch I counted that as 59 seconds and it's still sort of doing its thing but every application on, on the dock is stopped bouncing. Um, it's so so impressive. SATA 2 again but a really high quality SSD um, it's just unbelievably fast. That's, that's 41 applications open there. So before we wrap everything up then, um, I just want to run a couple of games on this just for the hell of it. Um, this is San Andreas maxed out at I believe I, I don't know what the controls are um, 1280 by 100 maxed out um, frame limiter off and honestly as you'd expect it, it, it runs it perfectly fine. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the controls, I'm so used to playing it on the PS2. Um, yeah, it runs. It's, it's a 10 year old game, you'd expect it to run on on this laptop. Oh Jesus. So yeah, San Andreas, an older game like this, works like a charm. Something heavier then, like uh, th this is the new Tomb Raider. Um, this is again running at 1280 by 800. I, I refuse to run any PC game unless it's a full resolution. Um, I've got it hooked up to the Xbox One controller again, which works perfectly with OS X, which surprised me. Um, it's playable. Honestly, it is genuinely playable. And everyone knows that gaming on OS X is terrible. That looks around 20 FPS for me. Um, so if you're used to lower frames per second, if you can deal with them, then um, definitely playable, but um, if you want to do any gaming on this machine, just do the sensible thing and install Windows because you're going to get so much more performance out of it. So yeah, this little guy, even though the, the Cinebench score was, was jokingly bad, um, this thing can game to a certain extent. So conclusion time, um, is it worth it? Um, I'd have to probably say no. Um, I probably have to say if, if with my sensible hat on, go out and get a 2010 or 2009 MacBook Pro. You'll get the same amount of performance, a little bit more. Um, realistically, you'll have more support for RAM. You'll have a better GPU, and you won't have to go hacking together your own multi-touch trackpads. But if you want a project, these MacBooks are amazing. They are infinitely customizable, and they have a certain character about them. They sort of harken back to the to the days of the iBooks, and I really, really like that. An iBook G3 was my first ever computer, so 
yeah, I have a little bit of a soft spot for this laptop. Now, after getting over the original little niggle of the weight issue, um, I've just grown to absolutely love it. Um, the amount of work I get done on it is awesome. The keyboard has a lot more travel than what my MacBook Air had, which is a massive, massive plus for me. And yeah, all in all, I just absolutely adore it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.